Fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got traction. He's got rhythm. Uh, both of them. Maloney. Oh, oh he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up the wall. Oh, my God. Oh, that a big crash. Oh, my goodness. Half the field's going to get rolled. This is very close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. no. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What? Sometimes you just got to lick the stamp and send it. I don't know what happened on there. I, I just plucked her in first, gave some gin. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you are racing with other people. And if you no longer go for a care that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. We go green for 40 minutes of racing around Monza. Billy, look oh. at the defense by Ethan Gold just getting so punchy. And a brilliant getaway already from Josh Rogers. Two pro drivers going out of view between Dylan O'Keefe and Nick Foster. Stanaway's demoted to third. 
Webster wins week nine here at Sebring through the final corner. That's a huge slide for Cooper Murray. He's just trying to barge their way through and that's a, whoa. <laughs> that's a merry-go-round for Nick Perka. Campbell, Paolo Gaon, and Ferraris behind. Glenn Wood actually was flipped into the barriers. One of the most exciting pirouettes I've seen in quite some time. That's Van Gisbergen, and his day is done. Tell you what, if Calvin wins this race, I wouldn't be surprised. He's all oh. four wheels up the racetrack. Wow, and he just saves it on the apex. Contact almost made. Side by side through the elevation change. And Scotty McLaughlin has the move done, but he got over the over the crest. And what a send! Sends it up the inside, can't do anything with it. Shine Van already on the attack. It begins and sending has begun. And it's going to be a drag race to the line. Tuesday night is rapidly becoming a night to lick the stamp. Send it. I forgot I was helping commentate here. I was just sitting back in my jocks and, um... <laughs> <laughs>
to our commentary very carefully because we will be telling you what that keyword is that you'll have to type into the comment section. But let's talk about the revised race format in a bit more detail because in Season 1, we had the format of 40-minute races each week with compulsory pit stops and with a competition caution that was deployed at a random stage during each race. We've changed things up a bit for Season 2. So we're now going to have a couple of 20-minute sprint races. Race 2 will feature a reverse grid format with a random number of cars to be reversed based on a random draw that will take place after Race 1. Yeah, one of the most uh, enjoyable things that we've had and one of the things that we have... Uh had on the uh, SimScene broadcast over the last little while is back. People have been asking for it for a long time. The spinny wheel is back. So uh, we will have the spinny wheel come up after race one before race two, and that will decide what position will be pole for race two. So um, it, it's a little bit exciting and completely random, which I think is the coolest bit. The fact that we're going to have a completely random draw will make it a little bit more exciting. We're just uh, having some technical issues behind the scenes with uh, getting the iRacing server up, so uh, they're just having a couple of tech issues, so it will be up very, very soon, those drivers that are trying to get in, so uh, we'll, we'll have uh, some racing action very, very soon once we get in, as I said, two 20-minute races, it will go by really, really quick, so uh, it will be really, really cool racing tonight. So let's have a look at some of the names that are going to be lining up on the grid for this evening. Now, it's probably worth mentioning off the top that last night in Sydney was the gala dinner for the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. And there were a number of attendees, obviously, from the main game supercars and also from the support categories, which has meant that some of those drivers are understandably still in recovery mode. I can tell you that one of the commentators on this evening's broadcast is also in the final stages and, of recovery mode. And that wasn't me. Well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there, there's probably a few people who are feeling a little bit tired and emotional, shall we say. And hence the reason that some of the big names that we've had in previous weeks have just said that are not participating tonight. But still a very, very good field um, and some very, very talented operators that you will be seeing on the grid. Yeah, and uh, winners that we've had throughout the season as well, all back again. So um, Cooper Webster, we saw do win three of the races. The only multiple winner won three races throughout last season. So he's back again. Um, Three-time world champion on iRacing. Josh Rogers is back out there. Josh Anderson, who finished third in the Aussie Racing Car Series, will be back out there. And also Justin Rougier also getting back out there. Although I've seen he's having some issues of a different kind. His daughter's jumped into the seat on his sim rig and he can't get back in. So uh, he might have some <laughs> some other sort of issues. Not tech <laughs> issues, that's family issues. Yeah, that's a bit of a drama as well. Just having a look at some of the others in the field. Uh, Jackson Suslin Harlow, he's been a race winner. He just sent it before. He's going to be out there. Uh, Dominic Ferraris, who was a race winner last time we had the Ferrari GT3 in action at Road Atlanta. He will be in the field as well, and we can expect that he's going to be pretty competitive. Uh, who else have we got? Um, Andrew Collins, who was, by and large, the most consistent performer that we had in Season 1 of Just Send. It didn't actually win any races, but finished on the podium three times and was in the top eight in something like nine out of the 12 weeks. So Probably should have won that race at Phillip Island as well after getting literally punted at the finish line too. So uh, he did a good job in that one. But yeah, um, he'll be one to watch too. I think he was 10th in his session in qualifying. So um, it'd be interesting to see where he ends up out once all of the fields are combined. Of course, there's a multitude of uh, qualifying sessions and all of the fields are combined up together and split into separate uh, rankings according to everyone's qualifying time. So the fastest drivers are all together. The uh, drivers that aren't quite as quick are all put together. And the other thing will be that uh, we may see a couple of transfer spots from the early race into the main event for the uh, the second race throughout the night too. So there's some incentive for those guys that don't make the top race straight off the bat, that they can get into the top race later on. That may not happen tonight, but it will happen throughout the series as it goes on. And that's the thing that I do like about the two race format as well so because we're down to the two shorter races no pit stops anymore and no safety cars um that probably simplifies things a little bit from a strategic perspective but what it means is that you can't really play any games you just have to go as hard as you can and oh, because we do, 
Yeah, exactly. More sends, and also because we do have that random reverse grid format for race two, you can't sandbag because you don't know how many positions are going to be reversed. So you can't race for a particular position, knowing that if you finish in that position, you'll get pole because you don't know what that position is going to be. Yeah, we've seen um, in other races before when you say it's going to be a reverse top 10, people fight over that 10th position. If they're a ninth, they might go, well, I'll just let you through and I'll take 10th. But you can't do that tonight. It'll be somewhere between 15 and 55 will be the reverse number. So um, that will mean that y you really need to just push on and, and go for it. And the overall winner will be a combined uh, winner, we believe. We, we haven't really worked it out. Of course, there's no real winners at the end of the day. It's just about having fun and uh, we might just end up Adding it up as two different winners. We don't know yet. We haven't worked it out, but we'll, we'll work something out when we calculate who actually wins the night and things like that. So, um, but part of the fun of having just send it is that it doesn't really matter how good or bad your night goes. It's all about just having a laugh and having a bit of fun as we'll uh, get some pictures through in a minute, which will mean that we can actually see what's going on and see who's actually in the race. So while we just wait for those pictures to come through, good opportunity just to acknowledge the efforts of the commercial team behind Just Send It, which includes Trent Harrison and Ray Slow and also Glenn Wood, among others. They've worked very tirelessly over the off-season, as in the last three weeks, the, the break in between Just Send It seasons to secure some partners. We've already talked about Erebus Motorsport coming on board, Melbourne Performance Centre, Digital Marketing Tribe. They've set up a really cool chatbot with the Just Send It Facebook page, which is basically automated messaging to answer frequently asked questions about the series so get on the facebook page and try that out simwork simulators they're on board as well one of the other things though is that to just increase the exposure and the publicity for this series we're going to be doing a few different pr activities throughout the season but uh, one of the things that we're encouraging people to do is to think about people who are not currently involved in the just send it series but who maybe we want to become involved in the series either as competitors or in helping kick along with the publicity side of things. And Trent and I were doing a bit of brainstorming about this earlier on this afternoon. And a name that we came up with, or a couple of names in fact, Paul Morris and Russell Ingle from the Enforcer and the Dude TV show, which has absolutely skyrocketed in terms of rating since it was introduced earlier this year. They've covered just about every form of real-life motorsport that there is to cover, but we would love those guys to do a segment on Just Send It and just showcase the fact that it is a series where everyday people can race against supercars, superstars. So if, you, if you're listening on and watching on at home and you'd like to see Paul Morris and Russell Lingle get involved and give the series a bit of love, just start tag them in the comment section on the Facebook live feed and hopefully they'll see it and hopefully we can see Just Send It featuring on the Enforcer in the future. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool to have that, um, to uh, watch that every week. So that'd be pretty cool to have a segment on it. I reckon uh, they should do that. I think that'd be fair enough. Considering how many people are out there watching and getting involved, I'm pretty sure that they should look into doing that but uh, we're now getting pictures through finally we've got about five minutes left in the warm-up session we'll get a bit of an idea on who is actually out there on track beautiful sunrise conditions as well so track will be really really cool which means that there will be tons of grip for these cars going through the uh the nascar 2 and nascar 4 sections which are incredibly bumpy and that's what's going to catch out a lot of drivers in this race tonight Let's talk about the circuit. So uh, we are running the Daytona circuit, but using the infield section as is used in the Daytona 24-hour endurance race. We've already got... Oh, goodness gracious me. I don't know who that was, but they're in the space. About, about 100 metres in the air, and like you say, just about going into orbit. Here's a look at the track map. So the Daytona International Speedway circuit, we're running anti-clockwise direction. Total of 12 different corners. Main overtaking opportunities the two hairpins of turns three and five. Uh, also some very long sweeping corners and the banking that is synonymous with oval venues such as this one as well. So it'll be an interesting race with the big field of these Ferrari GT3 cars. A really cool car too. They're one of the most popular cars on the iRacing service. They uh, have an official race every hour. So 
Um, one of the most populated series, real short races normally. So this is actually a little bit longer than a lot of people are used to, being 20 minutes. The uh, official races only go for 15 normally, so um, drivers will be a little bit uh, caught out by that, but uh, pit lane speed limit. We don't have to worry about that unless someone makes a huge, huge error coming out of uh, NASCAR 4. We'll probably see a bit of bumping and pushing through the lane, but the big thing will be draft. There's going to be so much draft around this circuit, and that'll make things very, very interesting come later on in the race when they're all fighting for position. Another award that I haven't talked about yet, but there's going to be the Just Painted Award. So each week there will be a, uh, a nominee for the Best Painted Award, for the Best Livery. And the way it will work is that each Wednesday there will be a post that will go up um, asking competitors to submit a picture of their paint job. And the picture that collects the most likes on that Facebook post wins that week. And once we get to the end of the 12 weeks of the season, then we'll have a, uh, a grand finale where people get to vote on the 12 winners from each week. And the overall winner will be winning a short handled shifter thanks to SimWorks. So that's another cool prize to reward people who are creative with coming up with some spectacular liveries, which we have actually been able to see done for this season because Although the specific car and track combinations still don't get announced until the Monday night prior to each round, all of the cars for this season have just sent it have been announced, so people have got the opportunity to go away and create custom liveries. It's given everyone a little bit more opportunity to, to get that done prior to the event, so um, we, sh we should see some really cool looks out there for this season. So fingers crossed some people get involved and actually do get some liveries sorted and, and have something different for their cars throughout this season so fingers crossed we do see some different looks um, but uh, yeah, we're nearly time to get going there's only a minute and a half left I'm actually getting really really excited it's going to be really cool but don't forget do share the broadcast on Facebook and we will have the keyword to give you an opportunity to win the modem simulation two hour sim session very very soon so make sure you stick with us throughout this broadcast because it's going to be a big opportunity to win a really cool prize. Stay tuned for that one. Make sure that you keep watching until we announce what that code word is. And then if you comment with the code word and you share the broadcast stream, then you'll go in the draw to win that two-hour sim session. Thanks to Motum Simulation, this warm-up session winding down and... Race number one will be, I suppose what you would say, status quo, because we'll have the fastest car starting at the front of the field. It will be a race based purely on who can race away at the front. But race number two, when we have that, that partial reverse grid format, we're going to see some very fast cars having to work their way through the field. I think that race two, Jay, where we're going to see a lot of very spectacular sends. 100%. We'll see some absolutely crazy shenanigans through race two so um yeah race two is going to be really exciting i'm looking forward to that but uh, it's going to be a lot of drivers that try and get themselves settled as well through race one it's going to be a tough race um to actually get themselves sorted for race one so looking forward to seeing how it plays out one minor mistake could absolutely cripple someone's night so this is going to be really interesting i think the other thing too the drivers aren't 100 percent sure whether this is a standing or a rolling start as well they're all hoping for a rolling start, but if it's standing start, that is going to make it very, very interesting. The other thing as well is that if you get involved in an incident early in race one, having the reverse grid for race two means that there is still something to fight for. If you can work your way back into a decent position, then you never know. You might just benefit from the reverse grid format for race two. As we have a look at our grid positions, Josh Anderson, the Aussie racing car driver on pole, Josh Rogers, alongside him on the front row then it's wayne burke and jared phil sell on row two simon feigl and ross brizzo on the third row of the grid justin ruggia the recently proud aussie racing car series champion and cooper webster they will line up out of grid position seven and eight yeah, and got enough time to go through this grid because they've got one full uh lap under the safety car so jackson susan harlow race winner in this series previously at uh was watkins glenn the uh Starts from ninth, Emerson Harvey, another consistent driver, will start 10th with Jackson Walls and Ryan Jerick on row six. 
Row 7 is Nick Carroll and Blake Neck with Job Stewart and Jeremy Clark alongside each other on row number 8. Good to see Nick Carroll, another one of our real life drivers from the Super 3 Series in the field. Back then to Brady McHugh, Jack Hotter, Gary Hamilton in 19th, Trent Harrison in position 20, Brad Newman in 21st position, Blake Purdy, another real life motorsport competitor in the miniature race car series. The South Australian boy starts out of 22nd position. Michael Cutterjar and Thomas Hins rounding out in your top 24. Then we've got Andrew Collins, who will no doubt make his way through the field. Starting in 25th, we'll probably see him in the top eight by the end of race one. Mia Ott in uh, 26th with Brett Cananzi and Brenton Hobson in the 88. Everyone knows Hobbo 88, of course, raced in the E-Series. We'll start from position 28. Paul Mantle and Matt Morris on row 15 with Cameron Dance and Michael Hammond starting out of row 16. Some very familiar names there for people who tuned in for our coverage of season one of Just Send It. Sam Devantia out of 33rd ahead of Ben McMillan from the Australian Racing Group, one of the people involved in the many TCR series. Ivan Devantia out of position number 35. Glenn Wood out of 36. Then it's Anthony Rordino back to race low. Another one of the members of the management team for Just Send It. Christian Lindbom, another one of our real life racing defenders. And Gian Gucciardo rounds out our top 40. Yep, that uh, Gian Gucciardo being Vince Gucciardo from GB Galvan. I think great to see him out there having a run tonight. So uh, we get ready to get underway. It's, uh, Anderson and Rogers on the front row. The Joshua's side by side. Joshua's with an initial in their name. So uh, that's a, a little bit of a different one. Joshua W. Anderson and Joshua K. Rogers. So uh, they'll get the field away. Wayne Burke, we know from previous broadcasts here on SimSpeed that he is very, very quick at the start and very aggressive. So he won't be scared to, uh, to have a bit of a go and uh, try and get himself involved very, very quickly. And you can see Jared Philsell. I must say, that is an interesting livery from Philsell. I'm not sure whose cat that is on the car, but that is someone's cat that is uh, his skin on the car that's been wrapped on the car. Jared Philsell wanted him to go there a little bit early as well. He pulled up alongside our two front row starters as he now merges back into formation. Not too far away from seeing the safety car pull off into pit lane to get underway for season number two of Just Send It. Season one thrilled us right throughout the season. I'm sure that in season two, we're gonna see just as much action. Yeah, 100%. Make sure you do share the broadcast on Facebook. Make sure you do get ready for the code word because we will give it to you all very, very soon. Anderson and Rogers ready to go at the front of the field. And uh, Phil Sull is ready to go. He wants to absolutely fly by. He's not going to wait around. He's going to try and jump all of these guys at the start. Watch for that fourth car along. The number three is the one to watch here, I think, at the start. So because we don't have any pit stops, we don't have any refueling, strategy will not be a factor tonight. It's all about raw pace. It's all about race craft. It's all about just sending it. You can just be on the anticipation building up, can't you? I reckon there that uh, Jared Philsell's getting pretty impatient. You could see him there just jumping on and off the brake pedal to make sure that he didn't make nose-to-tail contact with either of the two cars starting on the front row of the grid. Here we go. Green flag flies and a good jump there from Anderson. Rogers tucks in behind. As I said, Wayne Burke would get a good start, and he has. Ross Rizzo is the one that's got a really good jump around the outside. He's already taken a spot. Let's see if we can go through clean at the start of this race. It looks like we might. Phil Sell was trying to have a look on the outside there of Burke as they headed into the first corner, but thought better of it. Tucks back in behind and this single file. It's still got a few moves happening a little bit further back in the pack as they get down into the first of the right handers on the circuit. A few cars running wide a little bit further back in the pack. So far, fairly well behaved, but not sure how much longer we'll be able to say that for because we know that there's going to be aggression and already Josh Rogers looking to fight his way up the inside of Josh Anderson. Those two cars, the race leaders, will be side by side through the infield section. Coming back on to the oval up to NASCAR turn one. They've changed position three times on the official timing screen. Back in the field, Blake Nex had an issue and he's dropping down the timing sheets. We'll stay live with this though because this is getting pretty racy. 
a little bit of bumping and this track being the old version of Daytona is incredibly bumpy so if the drivers haven't driven this track a huge amount they will find bumps in places they will not be expecting so that will change how drivers approach this another thing too is you don't want to be leading on the last lap but how's that from Josh Rogers just chops across Josh Anderson and steals the position away and takes the race lead nice move Josh Rogers heading into the bus stop there he was on the outside so he had to go the long way round, but he had the momentum and through the bus stop he was able to hold track position on the right hand side and that has allowed him to take the race lead away from Josh Anderson Wayne Burke just maintaining and watching Greg there in third position trying to pick up a bit of an advantage from the draft but Josh Rogers having taken the lead might lose it again because Anderson's going to be on his outside as they head to the complete lap Anderson Contact around between our leaders both of our leaders have come together Anderson and Rogers, the two Joshes who started on the front row. There's more dramas as well involving a couple of cars in the midfield. But our two front runners who are battling ferociously for position have come together with barely more than one lap completed. Unbelievable. That is crazy to see as we get a replay up and see Anderson actually got a little hit from behind there from Jared Philsell. And he's then collected that other car of... Uh, of uh, Josh Rogers there, just had a mental blank there. So um, Anderson and Susan Harlow, the two teammates, now teammates, uh, side by side there. So we come back live. Also had Cameron Dance and there's another car that's also out of the race. At unofficially, Glenwood is now the unofficial race leader, but I'm pretty sure he's cut the course to get it around to the pits because that car looks a bit sick. So Wayne Burke is now the leader of the race. So Glenwood was one of the cars that ended up in the fence on the outside while they were trying to take evasive action. But Wayne Burke, the big beneficiary of that, like I said, he was maintaining and watching Greek. And when there was some contact between those other cars that were battling for the race lead, he was ideally positioned to slip through on the inside and avoid all of the carnage that, that unfolded right in front of him. But interestingly enough, Josh Anderson, even though he spun out, has only dropped back to ninth position. So he's not lost that many positions when you consider the number of cars in the field. And likewise, Josh Rogers is 16th. It's not ideal, but it could have been a whole lot worse. Yeah, 100%. But we know how good he is too, Rogers. So he could have closed that back up. The gap is five seconds between he and the current race leader of Wayne Burke. We just saw there Jared Philsell and, and Ross Rizzo having a little bit of a battle side by side down the straight. There's another issue. Job Stewart into the wall. And also Ryan Jerrick involved in that one too. Job Stewart. Almost got stuck in the wall there too. He hit the wall really hard and that car is heavily damaged and he will probably be raced up. I've seen Job Stewart have some really, really good races and some really good performances in just said it previously, but we've seen him have some mega stacks as well. And this race is going to be one that will be added to the mega stack list when it comes to Job Stewart's accomplishments in just send it. We gave another car a little hit there. I believe that was possibly... Matt Morris, maybe Blake Perdue, actually, I'm not 100% sure, but from that contact, you'll have a look at how bad the damage is to that car. <laughs> He's got no control at all. Um, he'll have to bring it in the pits. Might be able to get a spare car and get back out there. Josh Rogers, they're already starting to make moves and get back towards the front of the... This is where we don't have penalties for dangerous re-entries to the circuit because Job Stewart would have been on the receiving end of one there after he spun out. He literally drove straight back into the oncoming traffic to rejoin the race. Like you said, though, Josh Rogers working his way back up the order. So he'd fallen back to 16th, but he's already got his way back up to 10th position, Josh Rogers. So this has been a strong recovery for him so far. Here is the battle for the race lead. Wayne Burke continuing to lead, but Simon Feigl applying the pressure. And look who's lurking there in position number three. Our three-time race winner from season one, Cooper Webster. And he's got good pace, and he is right with our leaders. Simon Feigl having a little bit of a mistake there in a turn one. Of course, he's the uh, team manager of Altus Esport and, of course, works at Modem Simulation. So we thank him for his help behind the scenes as well in uh, getting some prizes organised. But Cooper Webster, as you said, we know how good he is in this series. He just seems to find himself in the right spot at the right time. You don't do that from luck when you do it multiple times. You might get lucky once, but you're not going to get lucky every single week. So he's doing a very good job. He's really become the master of being able to anticipate the race and understanding how it's all going to play out. And that saw him benefit on a number of occasions in 
season number one where he was able to get some really, really impressive results. And uh, he's very well positioned once again in this one. Gap between Rogers and Burke is 7.4, well, it was 7.4 seconds, now 7.2. Fastest car on track at the moment is Simon Feigl. His best lap is a 43.1. Uh, next driver to do anything close to that, well, actually, Cooper Webster did the same lap time last lap by, pretty much. So they're both looking re really, really quick. A little bit quicker than Burke. Of course, that's the draft at this circuit. It's such a huge advantage. And as I said, I don't think you want to be the leader on that last lap coming through the bus stop because you could find yourself in all sorts of trouble at the finish line. We've seen in other races here, including one with Wayne Burke, where we've had three or four across the line separated by nothing. So it could happen. to Look, the exact point there is that the drivers are almost going side by side coming up to the finish line, even though Burke had a half second advantage coming out of the bus stop. I think if you're going to be leaning on the last lap, you need to make sure that you've extended enough of a margin over the cars behind that they're not able to just sneak stream their way past you. That's going to be the key thing there. As we ride on board with 8th place Jackson, Susan Harlow, looking at the rear bumper of Emerson Harvey as they run down oh. into the right-hander at turn three and some contacts. And there's Josh Rogers fighting his way up the inside. So... In going for a move there, Susan Harlow ran it a bit wide. That left the door open, and Josh Rogers has been able to capitalise and make up another position. And I think he's going to get another one here. I think he'll get Jackson Susan Harlow, because from that little bit of contact, there's a bit of damage behind, or just in front of the left-hand rear wheel of Susan Harlow, as he has a couple of tech issues as well. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Rogers gets this done really easily coming out of NASCAR 2, and will maintain the momentum into the bus stop chicane, which is a really, really tough braking zone. And the, uh, the position of the sunlight here as well will play a factor with these guys. It's a little bit difficult to see a braking point because you come out from just behind the uh, now old grandstand, then bang, the sun back in your eyes again. It looks like Rogers will get it done. And uh, Emerson Harvey almost thought about making the move there on Susan Harlow, but he might have a little bit of damage from that contact too. Josh Rogers got that move done easily. He got such a beautiful run there coming out of turn number seven. So that by the time they got to the bus stop, he was well and truly clear of Susan Harlow. So Josh Rogers now up into seventh position. Next man on his hit list, the guy who he came together with earlier in the race, Josh Anderson. Feigl almost lost it at 270 kilometres an hour as he almost ran into the rear of Wayne Burke at the finish line. He's run wide, and this could open the door for Cooper Webster to take third, uh, sorry, second position away. I'd be surprised if Webster gets this move done. No, he's just going to hang back and watch. Very, very mature driving here from Cooper Webster. A track where there's so much draft, that is a good ploy. That is a very, very clever position to just sit there and watch. This is a great battle between these top three, but what they have to be careful of is that they don't slow each other down while they're battling the track position, because if they do... We'll invite some of the other faster drivers to catch them up. We've got a drama here for one of the competitors a little bit further back. It's Matt Morris in the Velocity Magazine entry, who has had a bit of a tangle with another car and a bit of a spin race slow in the Just Send It Ferrari entry in a bit of trouble as well. Gary Hamilton's also had a spin as well. Is this contact there from... Who is that? If that... <laughs> it was a roll over there. Um, he, wow. He got turfed. That was Brady McHugh. Well, there's your nomination for biggest failed send of the night. That was a, a big, big failed moment there for Brady. So uh, he will continue on. But we're halfway through the race. I think it's time to do it. Let's give out this code word and see if people can win a prize. So, ladies and gentlemen, those of you tuning in at home right around the world, code word for tonight, quite easy. It's Moton. And why not? Because Moton simulation... Uh, giving away our prize for this evening. So just a reminder, all you need to do is type Moton into the comments section on the Facebook Live feed, and also make sure you share the post. If you do that, you go in the draw to win the two-hour simulator session in one of the Moton simulator centres in your city of choice, Melbourne, Sydney, or Auckland. That's what we were talking about before. Wayne Burke led at the finish line. It's now back to third just from the braking zone of turn one. Cooper Webbs is going to take them both in. No, not quite. Simon Feigl now leads this race. Cooper Webster on the outside of Simon Feigl as they head down to the next corner. Feigl just about stays ahead as they head through the 
left hand kick. Let's see who gets the breaking approach right for turn number five. It'll be Feigl just who continues to hold out Coop and Webster. But this is a cracking battle between these top three cars who are only separated by about half a second as they cross the start finish line last time around. Josh Anderson's back up to fourth position. This has been a really strong recovery drive from Anderson after he and Rogers came together at the beginning of lap number two. And at the moment, Josh Anderson is lapping he's actually a fraction slower than our race leaders last time around. But he does now have some clear track. He had to pass a couple of cars on the previous lap. Now that he's got some clear track, he should be able to start hunting down these top three runners. Feigl has uh, given up the spot to Cooper Webster through the bus stop. But I don't think that's a bad move either. Have a look at the run that Burke's got out of the bus stop. He's already going seven kilometres an hour faster than Cooper Webster. They're going to go three wide over the finish line. They've got about five laps to go as well. One thing I was going to say, while these three guys fight, they're slowing each other up. Josh Rogers is only five seconds back. He's gained two and a half seconds in the last two laps. Look at this three wide. As they head down towards turn number one, and it will be Feigl. No, down the inside, Cooper Webster side by side into the first corner and it's Webster who just squeezes ahead of Simon Feigl to hold that position in the race to lead. Oh, not for long though. Oh, a bit of a bump and uh, Feigl's through but side by side through the little kink at turn four. This can sometimes end in disaster. The car behind usually has to yield. They've made a little bit of contact. They're going 240 k's an hour at that point too. And just to illustrate your point about them slowing each other down, Josh Anderson was a second quicker than Wayne Burke, eight tenths of a second quicker than two from Webster. He is catching our leading trio at a rapid rate of knots. And Josh Rogers, 1.4 seconds quicker than Wayne Burke. So Rogers now under five seconds away from the race lead and closing quickly. Rogers has draft to help and Anderson isn't far off getting in the draft of these three guys. Anderson will be there with two laps to go. This is going to be an awesome finish. And potentially a bit of lap traffic coming up as well, but they're going to have to negotiate their way through. So shaping up for a grandstand finish in the first race for season two of Just Send It here at Daytona International Speedway. Nose to tail once again as they exit the seventh corner and head up towards the bus stop. Yep, so through this is now NASCAR 3 and four and they're going to go side by side down the front straight again who's actually going to be the lead at the finish line they're going to be three wide I have a look at burke on the apron normally below the yellow line is against the rules but i think it doesn't really matter in just send it does it the lap times though very very interesting 44 8 for feigl compare that to josh rogers a 43 2. rogers could be there at this current pace with half a lap to go that will make things very very interesting I wouldn't be surprised if Anderson is in the draft coming out of the infield and onto the oval. 43.7 was the lap time for Anderson the last time through. So once again, quicker by quite a significant margin compared to our three race leaders. And here's that lap traffic that I was talking about. In the next couple of corners, they're going to have to negotiate their way past some slower cars. Who can get the better run? Who can overtake these lap cars cleanly? Good job from the first of those back markers just to step off the racing line and make sure that he didn't impede the contenders as they worked their way past. Yeah, that was the car of... I believe that was Glenn Wood, who we saw earlier on. He's actually been able to get in his spare car and get going again. Now, let's see Anderson's speed. Live speed is around about... Yeah, he's definitely in the draft because his speed is increasing at a much, much faster rate. So... Anderson is well and truly in this fight now in uh, the number two. Was position three in the Aussie Racing Cars Championship this season. Did a very, very good job. Was very competitive all season long. And uh, he's well and truly closing in on that front three battle who are just slowing each other up. You can see it in the, the gap between them. You can see it visually now that it's closing in. And Josh Rogers, you've been talking about the fact that he's had really good pace the last few laps, but when he doesn't have his track position, he does have Jared Bilsell and Ross Rizzo ahead of him. So we will have to clear those two before he can start thinking about attacking for the race lead. He's got that gap now. It's 4.7 seconds. So uh, Rogers not quite able to get as much time, although that lap by was the fastest car on track once again. 
Uh, well, timing has gone a little bit haywire because Brett Cananzi did actually cut the course a little bit and cross the line in the lead driving down the pit lane. So that is why you see the timing is a little bit uh, haywire there for a moment. So Cananzi was scored in the lead across the line, but he's no longer the leader, obviously, because... That car doesn't look too healthy there for Brett Cananzi in the uh, oh. Clip Sim Racing car. Is it Susan Harlow and Emerson Harvey are going at it pretty hard here. They sure are. A bit of contact between those two cars. I'm glad that you identified that timing issue there, Jay, because I was concerned that I might not have fully recovered from the gun within a while. Some of the information that I was trying to decipher. Um, go back to the front actually because have, oh, have a look at this late lunge there from Feigl to get past the lap car that is uh, I believe that's Trent Harrison he's seven laps down no he's in the pit so Trent Harrison isn't there I'm not sure who that car was that they just drove past there but uh, yeah, these guys are going at it and Susan Harlow and Harvey have just changed position three times again Anderson though he's in the draft and closing in on these guys I wouldn't be surprised if he's there they're going to two laps to go in the cross line possibly three laps to go actually by the look of the timing screen it'll be uh, pretty close between two and three laps to go cooper webster down the inside of simon feigl as they head into turn one feigl trying to hang tough around the outside but cooper webster not having any of it the young hyundai xl races from victoria back up into second position and here is josh rogers so we were talking about the fact that he was going to have to work his way uh, oh no! Jared Bill Sell, and we've had contact involving our race leaders. That's Cooper Webster, has made contact with either one of the cars that he was battling against for a lapped car, but drama for Cooper Webster, a collision which is going to put him out of contention for the win here. And was it? Yes, he actually got a tap from Simon Feigl. So it was contact between the second and the third place cars that has caused that incident. Unfortunate there, Feigl, very, very clean racer, so he'll be feeling absolutely horrible right now. But uh, what that's done, it's released Wayne Burke. He's already pulled three seconds now on Anderson because Anderson had to check up for that incident as well. So Burke is absolutely in the box seat to steal this race win. Started it uh, in third position. Interesting, the, uh, the postie of this race at the moment is Michael Hammond, plus 21 positions. He's done a very, very good job tonight as Rogers and Rizzo go side by side. Ross Rizzo, so, very, very quick in these cars as well. Just to elaborate on what Jay was saying there about the postage. So it's become tradition in season one of Just Send It that we recognise the best postman, which is the driver who makes up the most positions from where they qualified in each race. I'll tell you what, we're going to be seeing some pretty spectacular posting efforts in the reverse grid race, you would imagine. Have to. You have, have to see something really spectacular. As we see Susan Harlow, he's going to get the move done here on Emerson Harvey, but we're going to have to cut away because Rizzo and Rogers and Phil Sell, three names that are synonymous in the Aussie sim racing world. Rogers and Phil Sell race together in the E-Series, and Rizzo probably one of the most underrated GT racers in Australia and New Zealand. Three-time winner of the GT Series we host here on SimSpeed TV. He, uh, very, very quick driver in these cars, so he'll uh, be enjoying this little fight that is in right now between these uh, very, very accomplished drivers. So Josh Rogers has worked his way past both of those cars, so Josh Rogers now up into fourth position. He's got some clear track, but the problem is that we are now on the last lap, so time running out to make passing manoeuvres. job from Anderson to get second position as well so Susan Harlow as well back to eighth position but that drive from Rogers to go from 16th back to fourth after uh, unfortunately getting dumped he'll, uh, he'll be happy with the fourth and of course reverse grid will change all of that for next race looking forward to see what number we get that'll be very very fun so through the bus stop they come for the final time really impressed with the recovery performances from both Josh Anderson and Josh Rogers after their contratomp early in the race. But honours in race number one for season two have just sent it. An exemplary performance. Battled hard for the lead when he needed to, but stayed out of trouble when he needed to as well. Congratulations to Wayne Burke. He is your race one winner. And at the line, Anderson and Feigl crossed within six thousandths of a second of each other.
I think that needs a replay to have another look at that because that is incredibly tight between these two teammates. Feigl, the team boss. No team orders here between these two. You can tell from the way they fought. Almost bumped wheels as well. And that is six tenths of a second at the line between those two. So a photo finish between those two cars at the finish line. We did have to go back to the video replay just to work out who'd actually crossed first. But that illustrates the point that you were making before, Jay, about the power of the slipstream here at the Daytona circuit. Before we get to the results, we have to go to find out how many positions we are reversing for this race so that the admins can get started on uh, reversing the grid. So uh, we'll get the spinny wheel up on screen in just a second. When I click the right buttons. There it is. Told you we'd have a wheel. We're ready to go. Let's spin. Don't like it's Wheel of Fortune time. We may have to change this if it doesn't come up with the right. Now I have to spin again because I've been told I have to do it for less than 30. So we'll spin again. I just got told from the admins I hadn't read the message. So we'll spin again. Here we go. No, we'll go again. Third time lucky. <laughs> How's that? With uh, been an issue with the, the field here, we normally would run a, a 60 car grid. There we go. 23 is the magic number for tonight. So we normally run a 60 car grid, but uh, this track unfortunately only holds 40 cars. So we uh, had a couple of issues there with a couple of drivers missing out. So uh, top 23 reversed. So Mia Ott therefore grabs pole position for race two because it was Mia Ott who finished in 23rd spot in race one. Mia Ott and Rex Lowe will be on the front row of the oh, grid. No. Here are your results for race one though. So Wayne Burke, your winner ahead of Simon Feigl. Josh Anderson, good recovery to third position. Ditto for Josh Rogers. Ross Rizzo finishing up in fifth position ahead of Jared Gilsell. Cooper Webster in seventh spot. Emerson Harvey in 8th position. Good drive from Harvey to get in 8th there and finishes ahead of Jackson Susan Harlow, our pole sitter. So, I'm sorry, no, Susan Harlow started back in the field. It was Josh Anderson who was our pole sitter, my mistake. I knew it was one of the Alta C Sports crew. Uh, Blake Purdy in 10th position with Michael Hammond in 11th. Andrew Collins, we said he'd come up the field and get into the top 10. We were pretty close. So, uh, start from 12th position, uh, sorry, finish in 12th position. Means a, uh, an 11th place start in the next race. He could get all the way up to first with that run that he had there. Brad Newman in 13th with Paul Mansell 14th. Brenton Hobson got his way up to 15th from 28th. Jeremy Clark in 16th position. Over the page, Jackson Walls finished up in 17th position ahead of Matt Morris, who recovered well from a spin to 18th position. Blake Neck in 19th spot. Michael Cutterjar in 20th. Gary Hamilton in 21st, and then the drivers who will be lucky enough to start on the front row of the grid for race two. Race low and me on positions 22 and 23. Ryan Jerrick, how unlucky is he? 24th position in the end, only one spot away from being on pole position for race number two, but he finished 24th, so that is where he will start for the second race. Start alongside the race winner though, so you know you're in a bit of good company there. So we've got a Nick Carroll and Christian Limbaum in 25th and 26th, with Vince Gucciato finishing in 27th, last car on the lead lap. That's a bit of an unlucky story for all the rest of the field. Job Stewart, Glenwood, we saw those cars limp home. Justin Ruggier got involved in that huge wreck we had early on in the race with Anderson, Phil Sell and Rogers, who's an unlucky bystander there. He finishes in 30th position with Ben McClellan in 31st and Jack Hodder in 32nd position. And then we round out our top four here with Ivan Vantagiato, Brett Cananzi in 34th, back to Brady McHugh, Cameron Dance 36th, then Trent Harrison, Thomas Hins, Sam Devazia and Anthony Rordino completing the cars that participated in that first race. So... We're in a bit of uncharted territory here in Just Send It because this is a bit like a half-time break, isn't it, Jay? So this is where we go through, we analyse what happened in race number one, but we also talk about what you can expect for the rest of the series in Just Send It. So as mentioned at the top of the broadcast, we do have some great sponsors that have come on board this season and are offering up some great prizes 
for our just standard competitors. So we've already talked about the fact that Erebus Motorsport have come on board as a sponsor. Check out the prizes that they're offering though, Jay, because um, thanks to Erebus Motorsport, a couple of lucky just send it competitors are going to walk away with a two hour sim session with coaching from Virgin Australia Supercars Championship driver Anton Di Pasquale. And not only that, but Erebus Motorsport have also offered up some hot laps in the V8 supercars as well. Yeah, how good's that? I actually want to go out and drive now. I, I never want to drive. Everyone knows that the joke is that I don't drive ever. And uh, I actually want to get out there and have a go and try and win that prize because that would be such a good prize. So, so many cool prizes on board, but yeah, the Erebus prize is really, really cool. Two hour sim session, well and truly worth it, but to have a, uh, an opportunity for a ride as well in the car, um, that's an incredible prize pool. So big thanks to Erebus for their support of Just Send It. They've also shared uh, a few posts on their Facebook page as well, which is cool and uh, looking forward to seeing who wins that prize and we'll make sure that we get some really cool photos from that as well, which... Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing who gets it and uh, how it all plays out. Simworks, as we mentioned before, are offering a prize for the best paint scheme on Just Send It, or as it's being described, the Just Paint It prize. So that will be awarded at the end of this series. So each week we will select the best delivery for that week. The 12 liveries will go into the grand final. Everyone will have their opportunity to vote on them and then we'll come up with the overall prize winner and they'll be scoring themselves some sim racing equipment thanks to SimWorks simulators. And SimWorks do some really, really cool products as well. So looking forward to to giving that away. Um, SimWorks, one of the the top... um, Manufacturers in the AusNZ community of, of Sim Gear, so uh, very, very good quality products that they put together. So make sure you do try and win that one. And uh, if you are racing, be a little bit creative, don't be offensive. Think of something a little bit funny, like um, Jared Philsell's livery there. That was quite unique and different, but we've seen some pretty cool liveries throughout the time. And still remember um, Maddie Campbell's Ferrari that we had at uh, Road, Ameri- uh, sorry, Road Atlanta was probably. That was one of the best liveries we'd had so far, I would think. Yeah, that was cool, wasn't it? Um, now, I talked before about tagging people who we think should be involved in Just Send It who are not currently involved in Just Send It. And we talked about Paul Morris and Russell Ingle and the enforcer of the dude and the fact that it might be a good opportunity for them to do a segment about sim racing because of the fact that it is becoming an increasingly valuable tool for real-life racing drivers to fine-tune their craft. But I was just having a bit of a think as well, Jay, about some other people that we'd like to see engaging with the Just Send It community. And another idea that came into my mind, Aaron Noonan, the V8 sleuth himself, he does amazing history articles and stats analysis on the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. Maybe we can get him and his team involved in doing some stats for the Just Send It series as well. Yeah, of course, he actually has an esports team as well that we see here on uh, SimSpeed as well. They're racing V8 Scops as part of the uh, Henry James Racing crew. Uh, Chris Coxhead and Guy Leach running V8 Sleuth esports racing liveries. So, uh, yeah, it'd be cool to have the Sleuth on board as well. So make sure you do tag them. And uh, just being told as well that there's a few people that uh, have missed out on potentially getting in the prize because they haven't shared the uh, broadcast. So if you are wanting to win that prize... You have to share the broadcast as well as uh, put the, the keyword in. So make sure you do do that. If uh, you don't put uh, don't share the broadcast, no point out entering. You need to do both to win the prize. So make sure you do, do both of those things. Share the broadcast on Facebook and also type the keyword in the chat, which we have already mentioned. We will mention it again soon. But um, yeah, make sure you do both because uh, we want someone to win that prize. So at the moment, there's not many entries. So uh, the people that have already done it, probably thinking, don't say that, got a better chance. But we do want as many people in the running as we can get, and we will announce it tomorrow and have it on the Facebook page as well. So make sure you do uh, share the broadcast and uh, put the keyword in the chat, which we'll put up again just before we go through the grid for race two. And it is such a cool prize as well. I mean, two hours in a dedicated simulator set up at Motors headquarters in Melbourne, Sydney, or Auckland. I know that they have professional sim competitions at those facilities, and they are seriously impressive facilities as well. I know that they've invested 
hundreds of thousands of dollars in setting up those facilities. It's probably second only to actually driving a real race car in terms of the sensation that you get when you're in one of those sim setups. Yeah, lucky enough to have uh, done quite a few laps when we went up for the VSR showdown at Sydney Motorsport Park last year as part of the Shannon's Nationals and cams were involved in that as well. So uh, was lucky enough to do quite a few laps in uh, the Porsche around Phillip Island. That was very, very good fun. And uh, it is an incredible setup. Um, before we get into the race, for race two, as we're just about to get pitches through, shout out to the, the other drivers that are in the other races. We've got just over 120 drivers that registered to race tonight. Uh, shout out to race two winner, Tyler Howard. The third race tonight, Michael Smith crossing and Paul Nichols separated at the line by 0 0.06 of a second. How good would that have been to have on the broadcast? That was the, the Simon Feigl, Josh Anderson finish. Sorry, uh, yeah, Josh Anderson finish but for the race win in the third split. So well done, guys, for great result. Uh, someone so, can uh, save the replay and send it through to us. We'll try and get some pictures up on the Facebook page during the week. So just to explain that, because we've had so many entries tonight and because the grid capacity at Daytona is limited to 40 cars, it's meant that we've had to run to use the Speedway terminology, like a B main and a C main yep. for the people who missed out on qualifying for the A main. So some seriously good drivers in the B and the C races who unfortunately just didn't quite make it through the A race. So good to see that tonight it's been so well supported. Just as we wait for pictures to come in for race two, let's just analyze what we think is going to happen with this reverse grid format because it's uncharted territory just send it where we have this situation where we've got some of the drivers who aren't necessarily outright front runners starting up the front of the grid some faster drivers starting down the order if you're one of the drivers who's ended up near the front then how do you approach this mentally because you know that you're going to have to try and keep some of the faster drivers at bay but i would be thinking that my approach is you try not to worry too much about what's going on behind you you focus on what's in front of you make sure you drive perfect racing lines make sure you drive as fast as you possibly can and make sure you maximize the clear track line that's available to you early in the race as well the other thing too is if you've got someone like josh rogers coming up behind you don't be scared to let him go because you a you're going to get draft from him when you're on the straights and b you could learn something as well so you know he's going to get past you at some point so you, you always find that drivers that hold someone up uh, intentionally or you know try and block a little bit too much then find themselves they've lost so much ground that it's negated any point of them blocking anyway sometimes it's smarter to, like to think long term let them go work together and we saw how much working together made a big advantage we saw how much anderson rogers susan harlow worked their way back up through the field rather than uh seeing those guys that we saw in the front three burke feigl and um Cooper Webster, they weren't working together. They were fighting against each other and that brought them all the way back down. So um, working with someone when they're overtaking you and you know that they're faster is a much, much better thing to do, especially around a track where there's so much of a draft advantage. Well, I think in the case of some of those faster cars that are now going to have to, to work their way through from midfield starting positions, just a bit of patience as well. Don't feel like you have to try and win the race on lap number one. You do have 20 minutes to make up positions. So just a bit of patience and a bit of racecraft, I think, here as well. But after all, it is just send it. So I think we will be saying, seeing some fairly spectacular sends throughout this one. Yeah, 100%. We're going to see some big, big lunges because I always want to win this main event. It is the main race of the night. And uh, then you've got people that will be starting at the front that will be trying to defend. I mean, there's the, the two on pole and second, Mia Ott, and Reese Lowe, they'll both defend as much as they can because there's no draft when you're in first or second. It's the guys that are in third, fourth, fifth and back that are going to have that huge draft advantage. The other thing too will be those guys that are back in the field that will be trying to capitalise on the start of the race and, uh, and judge that start and try and get those positions early. We saw how good a start Wayne Burke had in race one. We saw that Jared Filzo, while looking really aggressive, missed the start and that uh, compromised his run. So... Making sure you time that uh, launch at the start of the race is just as crucial to try and gain yourself maybe two or three spots before you get to the braking zone at turn one.
I'm still waiting for pitches to come through. I thought we were going to have them by now, but no, we're not yet. So uh, our apologies for that. We're we're trying to uh, to get the session launched, but there's some technical issues behind the scenes that the admins are working on. So uh, a bit out of our control, but it's uh, it's been entertaining so far. I'm, I almost wish that we had the 40 minute format, but uh, the uh, the two twenties is. Definitely going to provide a really good show for this second race. I'm looking forward to seeing how race two does play out. Who's your pick, though? Who do you think might actually take it out? I'm thinking that uh, someone like Andrew Collins actually has a chance to finally win a race. Well, his race craft is really good, and he's not starting that far down the order. So Andrew Collins could actually be pretty well placed here. Also, Cooper Webster, we know how good his race craft has been throughout the year and he was one of the very front runners in race number one before getting caught up in that incident with Simon Feigl so I reckon watch out for Cooper Webster to come blazing through the field as well but just in relation to the technical issues just obviously bear with us ladies and gentlemen we do thank our admins which I suppose are in the same role as the volunteer officials that we get in real life racing events to give up a lot of time and effort to ensure that everybody can enjoy the experience and i think in fairness to those guys tonight this is the first time that we've had this new race format so obviously you expect that there are probably going to be a few teething problems in the back end just while they arrange the grid positions and sort it all out properly yeah exactly right there um do you have the help of the guys from oceanic sim racing as well who do run a lot of stuff in the oz and z community as well so those guys are uh, helping out behind the scenes, so we thank them. Uh, Simon Black, who uh, helps run V8 Scops with us here at SimSpeed TV. So those guys are all working together behind the scenes to try and get everything sorted. Um, so it won't be too much longer, but um, I want to talk about one of the other prizes that we've got coming up as well. We talked before about the uh, supercar ride, but we've also got the Melbourne Performance Centre, the Audi ride coming up as well. We haven't uh, announced what that will be for yet. It will uh, be announced in the next few days, but right at an Audi GT3 as well. That's going to be pretty cool. So the Melbourne Performance Centre, for those who are maybe not familiar with the operation, based out of Melbourne, surprisingly enough, but run cars in the Australian GT Championship and in the GT1 Australian Series that was part of the Australian Motor Racing Series events throughout this season, and also run some Audis in the TCR Australian Series. Very exciting team of people headed up by Troy Russell and the Audi R8 GT3 car is one of the very fastest Tim Top race cars anywhere in Australia when you look at the lap times that some of those cars have done around Mount Panorama in unrestricted form at events like Challenge Bathurst they are seriously quick race cars and where they make their speed is in cornering because of all of the aero all of the downforce that they carry, they are able to achieve some seriously high corner speeds. What does that mean for you as a passenger? It means be prepared to be blown away and experience G-forces that you would never have thought possible in any sort of tin top vehicle. So that'll be a very cool prize for whoever is fortunate enough to win it. I think we should take that one. <laughs> Just tell, tell the admins now we're taking, we, we need a commentator's prize, don't we? I agree with you on that, 100%. <laughs> we're giving away all the stuff and we're not getting anything in return, but no, it's really, really cool to have them on board once again, and thanks to Melbourne Performance Centre. And the other prize as well that we haven't talked about as well, we're going to give away a viewer, to a viewer, throughout the, uh, the, the year, or throughout this season at some point, a PC to actually get on and join Just Send It as well for someone that doesn't have a PC that can run iRacing, an iRacing-ready PC. How cool is that? That's a really good prize. Um, and I know that there's probably a lot of people tuning in who are wondering how they can get involved or what they might need in terms of hardware to be able to get involved. So giving away a computer that's ready to go and has the right graphics hardware and all of the other specifications that you need to be able to run iRacing and enjoy it, that's really, really cool. Yeah, 100% really cool. And uh, I know that... My first time when I got a uh, an iRacing ready PC, I uh, probably wasn't prepared enough for how much uh, it does end up uh, costing you in the end to to get everything you want. So getting a head start as I just joined the session and 
Well, we're in uh, sunrise conditions once again. Looks like it's about to rain. You'll see that in just a second, uh, Lucky. But the uh, the weather conditions out there on track, the lights are on, but uh, yeah, it looks like the rain is about to fall here at Daytona. Well, it won't, but it does look like it. <laughs> I was about to ask: um, Is there variable weather in iRacing? I know that there are some other sim programs where you can have dynamic weather conditions. There are, there is dynamic yeah. weather, yes, but not at this stage with uh, rain conditions. But yeah, dynamic weather is on iRacing now, so uh, weather does change throughout a race. So the wind direction, that the temperature, things like that. So of course it gets hotter as the day goes on and cools down as the night sets. So during a 24-hour race, for example, we might start with uh, track conditions around the 20 or 30 degrees with a 20-degree weather. It might cool down to 16, 17 degrees overnight, and then. The next day, when you're back out racing once again, you might find that the conditions are, are back up in the 40 degrees. So, yeah, it does vary, and it, it is pretty cool to have the variable weather conditions, but the track conditions at the moment, absolutely ideal for racing. Track temp 25 degrees. That means, once again, grip, grip, grip for these drivers. And grip equals confidence, and confidence equals... Sense. Sense. Yep. So, you can expect plenty of overtaking in this race. A few drivers that will be looking for a bit of redemption. One of them on screen right there, Justin Rougier, got caught up in that huge incident on lap one, or lap two, sorry, and I ended up a lap down. He was the most innocent bystander out of the three that were, or four that were involved. He got caught up in the secondary incident. They are, he'll be looking for a redemption. He'll be wanting to make his way back through the field. But uh, Andrew Collins, as we said, he's the one to watch for me. Um, we know how quick he is. So, uh, we've seen him move up 14 positions in race one. Got less than that to get to get to the lead in this one. And he's got all the fast guys behind him. And we know how good he is at defending positions too. So, he overtakes well and he defends his position well. That stems pretty well for him to potentially steal his first win. He's a smart racer, Andrew Collins. There's no doubt about that. But four drivers who we know are fast, like Justin Ruggier, who got caught up in incidents in race one and finished near the back of the field. This reverse grid format probably helps them a bit as well, mainly because all of the other faster drivers are starting a fair way down the order too. So I reckon that for the likes of Rougi, we might be able to see them make up some good positions too. Don't forget about sharing the broadcast as well. So uh, you can win yourself that two hour session at Modem Simulations near the Melbourne, Sydney or Auckland and uh, is one of the coolest sim rigs you can have a go on. Full motion, VR, incredible setup. So uh, make sure you do share the broadcast and put in the chat if you haven't already Motum. And from there you can potentially win yourself two hours at Motum Simulations worth just under 200 bucks, which is a pretty cool prize. And uh, once you go once, the, the bad thing is you want to keep going again because it is such a cool place. It's addictive. Sadly. <laughs> also, too, uh, one thing we haven't talked about is we do have live timing available up on our website as well if you want to find the link for that. Simspeed.live will take you straight to the live timing in a flash, and that will get you out there and uh, able to keep up to date with where all of your favourite drivers are because sometimes we just can't get them on screen to, uh, to show because there's just so much going on in these races half the time. I know that it's helped you out quite a lot, Lockie, with the, the live timing. It's uh, it's pretty good how much information you can get out of this, just like in the real world. Well, as a real life racing commentator, it's something that you rely on, and in a lot of situations, it would be very difficult to call a race properly without timing. So, for in racing commentary, just like real life, I'd say that it's absolutely essential. If you are a hardcore sim racing spectator, then you can do what I do and have the live timing going on an iPad and the vision going on a laptop, if you are that way inclined. Or you but can I do can... what I do and have five <laughs> screens of different data going at the same time. <laughs> you know what? You and, you and I have just given away what massive nerds we are for everybody else who's <laughs> uh, tuning in. I will, will say that I quite often will have multiple screens of coverage going on when it's available too of real life events with uh, on boards and things like that. So yeah, do uh, do love having the multiple screens and uh, 
For those of you who watch a lot of SimSpeed broadcasts, right on screen now is the meme that continues on and lives on forever. Brenton Hobson finds himself in sixth position. It's uh, been an ongoing joke within the sim racing world for three or four years that uh, Brenton Hobson in uh, major events could not finish any higher than six. So in V8 Scops, he had eight sixth place starts as his best, best starting position and eight sixth place finishes as his best starting, uh, his best finishing position. <laughs> Until one day he broke the hoodoo in a, in a fuel saver where he, nobody thought that fuel saving was possible and he's a self-proclaimed useless fuel saver. He fuel saved and got himself a podium. So the issue is he's never done it again. So, but it's amazing that you'll find himself in sixth position in championships, in races. All the time you'll all of a sudden see Brenton Hobson in sixth position. He's the meme that lives on forever and it will live on forever so hobo was in six but now he's in upside down six in ninth but um, the thing is you, though you'll, you'll see that now as soon as i say that you'll be like oh brent nobson's in six you'll see it all the time in, in a lot of real life racing categories if you finish sixth in every race that will position you in the top three in the championship though so coming sixth all the time is not necessarily such a bad thing well, yeah, well, the consistency in this season of our Scops is guess where we've got him in the championship? First? Sixth. Oh, sixth. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's behind uh, Jared Philsell, Madison <laughs> Town, Ethan Greg Galton, Ian Ford, and uh, he is in sixth, but yeah, he's very, very consistent, is uh, Brenton Hobson, but yeah, those other guys are in, Jake Burton as well. So, top six in uh, V8 Scops if you are interested, which is our top line V8 series here that we broadcast on SimSpeed. Uh, the top six at the moment are all six drivers that raced in the E-Series. So if you want to see some really top-class racing, 40-car grids, make sure you do tune in. And, uh, yeah, Brenton Hobson in sixth position. No no joke. 100% accurate that he's in sixth. Hobbo will uh, probably be listening right now and saying, why did you mention that, Jay? Because he hates that he continually finishes sixth. But uh, time to go through the grid. Will we see a standing start or a rolling start? The drivers don't know yet again. The sun starts to come up. I think we're going to have a rolling start once again. So we've got a bit of time to go through the grid again. The safety car is there on the track, and it's Mia Ott on pole position ahead of race slow. Gary Hamilton and Michael Cuttinger in positions three and four. Blake Neck and Matt Morris on your th third row of the grid. Back to Jackson Walls in seventh position, and Jeremy Clark in eighth. And ninth position, we've got Brenton Hobbs in the upside down sixth. So he'll start alongside Paul Mansell. Brad Newman and Andrew Collins, they're two to watch there. Brad Newman, also a very, very quick driver, will start out of 11th with Collins in 12th. Row seven has Michael Hammond, our biggest mover in the last race. Won the Posty Award for race one. He'll start from 13th with Blake Purdy alongside. Then Jackson, Susan Harlow, be looking for a bit of redemption from 15th position with Emerson Harvey in 16th position. Out of position number 17 on the grid, Cooper Webster, we're getting into the fast guys now. Jared Phil Sell, Ross Rizzo and Josh Rogers. Back to Josh Anderson in 21st, Simon Feigl 22nd. Now race one winner Wayne Burke goes from grid position number 23. That is where the inversion finishes. So Ryan Jerry climbs up out of grid position number 24. Position at number 25 on the grid as we go over the page. will be occupied by Nick Carroll, the Super 3 driver. And then Christian Limbom alongside, who uh, another real-world driver. Then Vince Gucciato out of 27. Joe Stewart in 28th position. Glenn Wood, Justin Rougier. They'll both be looking for redemption, real-world drivers as well. Uh, ben McClellan next on row 16 with Jack Hotter in the 32nd. The rest of the guys all had unfortunate nights at the back of the field here. And I've been looking for redemption in this race. Ivan Vance Gucciato out of 33rd position. Brett Knadzi in 34th. Back to Tyler Howard, Terry Nightingale. Jonathan Beekoff. So we've actually got some of the drivers who performed well in the B race to get elevated up into the main race for this one. Nick De Silva, Andre Burrell, and then Trent Harrison in all his position. Yeah, and Simon Black around at the field who's helped admin the race tonight. It's good to see a just send it car on the front row. Too bad it's in the reverse grid race, but uh, Reece Lowe will start from the front of the field. And uh, weather conditions for this race, as we said, it is very, very cool out on track. Mostly cloudy sky will mean that it's going to be a little bit more tough to get heat into the tyres. Sometimes that's not necessarily a bad thing. Interesting too, I've never noticed this before because 
normally uh, when we run this layout or ran this layout back in the day in iRacing because this is now the old version so it is a free version if you are on the iRacing service everyone gets this track as part of your subscription but uh, you're not normally allowed to run below the yellow line on the uh, tri-oval or in the uh, in NASCAR 1 and NASCAR 2 also NASCAR 3 and 4 but the guys are doing it tonight so I'm guessing the admin don't care tonight as long as they're sending it that doesn't matter thing is, if one person does it, then everybody ends up doing it. Exactly. Basically, what we saw in race number one was that pretty much the entire field at one stage or another during that race were taking liberties with that rule about going below the yellow line. So once again, the anticipation builds, and I reckon everybody's just held, holding their breath a little bit here, Jay, because nobody quite knows what to expect here it's the first time in just center that we've run with this reverse grid format we know that we've got some very capable drivers starting up the front but they're not quite as fast as the driver starting a bit further back the safety car about to head off into pit lane as the field negotiates their way through the bus stop and they start to form up in side by side grid formation we're getting ready for a rolling start here it is reverse grid time in season two of Just Send It here at Daytona International Raceway and Race Low, one of the organisers of this series, will be starting on the front row of the grid alongside me. Oh, there is the view for Wayne Burke, our Race One winner. He's starting out of position number 23. He's got a lot of work to do. Hey, I know he that face. To that result. I know that face. Look at that face there on the front of Nick Carroll's car. I think that wins the best livery of the night, doesn't it? I'm trying to pick it up, but I can't quite pick it up at it's, the moment. Who is it? It's on uh, Nick Carroll's car. It's your face. Really? It is your face on that car. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I think it's probably time to stop focusing on that and focus on some <laughs> racing action. Indeed it is. That's, wow, there you go. Nice one, Nick Carroll. Oh, no! Um, Underway we go, and we've already got oh, contact no. in turn number one. We've already got the pile up. Hopefully, most of the key contenders will be able to avoid that one, but we've got a couple of cars at least that are upside down. Brenton Hobson has unfortunately been involved. Jeremy Clark already in the pits. So, no sixth place finish for Brenton Hobson tonight, you would have to say. Michael Cutcher, just a little bit of contact in the back of Gary Hamilton. That just started a real big chain reaction, and there's... Hobson upside down, that's also uh, the car of, who did we say that was, Jeremy Clark upside down as well. Gary Hamilton also out of the race. Mayor oh, it's got a huge jump at the front of the field, but already making moves as we're seeing another incident back in the field. Brett Cananzi already up 22 positions in the four corners. How did that happen? What awareness of what was going on around him, obviously. It was able to yeah. his way through some of that carnage and Josh Anderson strong start as well already up into 13th position Matt Morris another driver looking very strong on this opening lap he's already moved up into position number two so he's made four spots on the opening lap and Josh Rogers has come from 20th up to 10th so Josh Rogers just as we expected making a very very strong getaway as well Andrew Collins in ninth position so already gained a couple of spots but yeah uh, Rogers up 10 Cananzi up 22, Job Stewart up 13, Hodder also up 14 positions. So some huge movers on lap one. Wouldn't be surprised here if Josh Rogers gets another position here. Because I've just seen Glenn Wood is out of the race. Mia Ott leads lap one. Matt Morris in second. Here comes Rogers to get this move done. Down the inside as they come across the start finish line. Looking to the inside, breaks late into turn one. A nice textbook move through on Andrew Collins and he'll go oh. on with it here he'll use the grass but he'll have to tuck back in behind Cooper Webster in the car in front in fact that'll cost Josh Rogers some momentum and he'll have to defend to the inside to prevent Andrew Collins going back around but he's actually slowed up he got balked there on the exit of turn number three there did Josh Rogers just got checked up as the exit of that corner and he's going to drop back four positions as a result of that slight loss of momentum I actually think you might have got a penalty, an automated penalty from iRacing for cutting the corner too aggressively. So he's uh, lost a fair bit of ground from that. So he'll have to work it all back. Blake Neck on a charge here too now, trying to get past Brad Newman in the number 20 car. Now, Reese Lowe leading this little train of cars, but 
lap one. That was uh, controversial to say the least, but uh, now very action-packed as here comes Newman through to get, take this spot away from Reese Lowe. So Lowe drops back to fourth. Mia Ott maintaining that position as Cooper Webster gets a spot as well. So Cooper Webster up to seventh. We suggested that he was going to be one of the drivers to watch, and he is well and truly on the charge. Already up to the position that he finished in race number one, where he was also in seventh spot. So this has been a strong drive so far from Cooper Webster. Back oh. to Josh Rogers, who's in behind Simon Feigl, and also Brett Cananzi. Yeah, Cananzi was slow there. He's actually pulled into the pit, so possibly some damage. Or a penalty. Reese Lowe also very, very slow. So he's had a penalty from the bus stop as well. So he's having to slow up and give up a bit of time. Paul Mansell also trying to make moves. But uh, Reese Lowe also losing a huge chunk of time. Ross Rizzo also trying to get his way back forward through the field. As uh, up the inside comes Jack Hodder. And a little bit of a hip check as well to say I'll take that position. Jack Hodder into 16th. Rizzo back to 17th. But uh, something really not right here for Reese Lowe. How's this for side by side with the teammates? That'll be a good photo op for those boys later on. Oh no! Contact between teammates is never a good thing. And you don't want to ever punt your team boss, Simon Feigl, around from contact with Josh Anderson. They were side by side on the run into turn number three. And Anderson aggressively down the inside of Feigl, but it's called, caused Feigl to drop back. Something wrong here for Jared Philsell. So he's. Has he just straight lined? Well, he's just decided he's not going to worry about the infield. And he's just going to keep going around the oval. Right. Yep. So uh, he's technically the leader, one. but uh, I that's think he'll have to come the, to the pits. Yeah, well, that's why the timing's giving us false information <laughs> at the moment because obviously he's not the race leader because he's missed most of the racetrack. He's oh, like no. hurting. Like, and he's contact. had contact with another car. So with Blake Neck. Who was on the outside. Blake Purdy shuffles back into the train there to get the sweet stream from the cars in front. Blake Purdy, a driver who was a race winner in the Formula Renault at Phillip Island in season one of Just Send It. Now, the livery on Blake Neck's car, the red Ferrari, that is the same livery as the one that is run by Tony Deep Police in the, um, well, has been run by Tony Deep Police in the Bathurst 12 hours, so that's actually a real life racing livery that's on that car. Here's Josh Rogers continuing to make up spots and make amends for that penalty that we saw him receiving a couple of laps ago. And he's currently battling it out with our race one winner, Wayne Burke. They'll go side by side. Those two drivers, Job Stewart, Jack Hotton, getting oh. involved in that battle as well. A little bit of a contact there between Stewart and Rogers. And then Burke gives Rogers a little bit of a hip check too. So Rogers has just been a punching bag in this race. Which is a little uncharacteristic for Josh Rogers to be a punching bag. But uh, when you're literally the best in the world at the moment, you become a little bit of a target for some of these drivers. But Rogers is good enough that he will drive away from these guys. Maybe not with contact like that though. Oh, he got punted big time and spins back up the hill. Fortunately, the other cars that were in that train have managed to miss that incident, but side by side with Wayne Burke, the two cars have made most tail contact. It's unloaded the rear end of Josh Rogers' car and caused him to go rotating into the infield. And then the momentum carried him back up the hill. And uh, as a result of that, he has dropped down into 18th position. And Blake Neck, a big crash as well. What has happened there? Surely he's had contact with another car. It's very unusual to see cars spinning off into the infield like that all by themselves. Although Blake Neck might be just about... Oh, he's on the grass. Wrong. So he was underneath the yellow line. He's got the left wheels on the grass. That sounds settled the rear end of the car. And he has done it on his own. So that's a shame for Blake Neck, who was running inside the top six or seven positions at the time, but he's headed back to pit lane. Timing on screen is 100% wrong. These guys here on screen, Mia Ott and Matt Morris, are positions one and two. As I'm just seeing, Andrew Collins is dropping down the timing sheets. What's happened to Collins? Jared Philsell is continuing on driving around the, uh, the Oval. He'll be actually the, uh, awaiting 
a DQ from Race Control. Cooper Webster's also had an issue, so we'll stay on this replay for a little bit here. But uh, Collins and Webster, we were in contact, and that's how baby Ferraris are made. <laughs> oh dear. We always knew that this reverse grid race was going to throw up plenty of spicy action and it's just been showcased there once again. So unfortunately that's set both drivers back at their way and it's gone on again as well. So I, I think Collins that might have been a little bit of I didn't wasn't too happy about that move that you made there. A little bit of payback you reckon? Yeah. Here we go, let's watch it from Andrew Collins. Maybe. Did Andrew Collins actually bother breaking for that corner? Possibly oh. not. <laughs> He was on the brakes, just very light. <laughs> um, I think that was a little bit of a thank you for the uh, incident that I already had. Ross Rizzo, Jack Hodder side by side across the finish line. To start lap number... I'm not 100% sure what lap number we're on because Jared Philsell has decided to... Uh, well, he's now been DQ'd from the race, but he ended up two laps ahead of the entire field. So he's absolutely ruined our timing. But uh, Rizzo through because we're almost halfway through. Where's Nick Carroll? So Nick Carroll's currently running in 11th position. I'm asking that question just because I want to see the car again. I cannot believe the livery that he's gone with. Like that. Look, even your photo, just the front of the front wheels there. <laughs> and I've only got your smile on the roof as well. What a photo. Obviously, they've raided my Facebook profile. Ah, <laughs> oh, fun. I'll be having, a, I'll be having a, a serious chat to Nick and his team about <laughs> after this race. You know that that's going to continue on for the rest of the season now and more drivers are going to do it. Well, we do have the award for the best paint scheme. <laughs> I don't know if that's the best though, is it? Surely that's not going to win it. <laughs> <laughs> Collins making his way back through the field. He's now behind Trent Harrison. This is actually 11th and 12th because the front of the field is still led by Jared Philsell on the timing, but definitely not in the real race. So, uh... Collins trying to get his way back forward. Possibly a bit of damage just on that Just Send It sticker on the front of that car. So he'll be struggling a little bit. So if we can just get a bit serious here again for a couple probably of should. minutes. Probably <laughs> should. So Nia Ott is actually the race leader at the moment, but Matt Morris was four tenths of a second quicker than him last time around. So it's actually pretty close between those top two drivers. Blake Purdy is third back to Brad Newman. Wayne Burke, our race one winner, has come up to the fifth position. So this has been a great drive through the field from Wayne Burke. Then it's Job Stewart, Jack Hotter, Ross Brizzo, and Simon Feigl in at ninth position. Nick Carroll will be inside the top ten once we correct that timing error for the Jared Phil Cell car. We'll uh, make sure that Jared's on the naughty list for next week. Uh, retirements in this race. It's a who's who of uh, this race as well. Josh Anderson out. Glenwood out. Brett Cananzi, who we saw have major issues in race one. He uh, ends up out in this one too. Emerson Harvey also out. And uh, Jackson Susan Harlow also out of this race. Tyler Howard, Michael Kutcher, uh, Jackson Walls and Jeremy Clark also out of this race. So we've lost a quarter of our field already. It's Rizzo and Hotter continue on. And have a look at who's in this now. It's... Uh, the best livery car in the field, Nick Carroll, is right in there too, and he's going to take the draft advantage from Jack Hodder rather than Ross Rizzo. Taking the low line, so obviously once you go below that yellow line, the track is flat as well, so you don't get the camber that you get by running up higher. So it is obviously a short distance to travel if you are below the yellow line, but... You might not be able to carry quite as much corner speed because you don't have the camber helping you turn the car around the corner. But good move there from Nick Carroll. He has actually been able to make up a position there. One other thing with that too is that uh, it's probably less bumpy than the oval is. We did mention early on that the oval here is very, very bumpy, but you negate that from uh, running down on that piece of track that is never run. So it is pretty much smooth below the yellow line, because uh, of course NASCAR races here, they're not allowed to run below the yellow line. So uh, Simon Feigl there just getting past, I believe that's uh, Reese Lowe, who's uh, a little bit further back down the field now. But, uh, it is getting close for the lead of the race, but Brad Newman and Wayne Burke, they are teammates 
for One Performance Racing. Burke through now. He's in fourth position. As uh, the timing will be fixed at the end of this lap because yeah, I just found that four and a half seconds that she needed to get to the front of the field. Nick Carroll though, still going on in this battle. This is actually one of the best battles on the racetrack at the moment. Jack Hotter, Nick Carroll, Simon Feigl involved in it, and so too is Andrew Collins starting to catch back up again as well after those couple of incidents that he had with Cooper Webster. Riding on board with Nick Carroll as he looks to get the sweet stream from Jack Hotter, pulls to the inside. Jack Hotter decides to take the high line. I'll go drag racing down through the triangle section. And it's oh. a bus stop. Rizzo got a great run. Actually gave Carroll a little bit of a bump. And Jack Hotter cut the corner and almost hit the wall. I mean, wouldn't be surprised if he did hit the wall there. Oh, no. Andrew Collins, another incident. And I think that was actually three. with... Jack Hotter as he tried to get going again after that issue through the bus stop. Watch Hotter here as he comes through to straighten up to get back on the oval. Is there contact from... Yeah, there might have been contact. Might have been light, but he's hit the wall and then he's trying to get back on. Here comes Andrew Collins. Oh, Jack Hotter has moved across, not realised that Collins was there. The two cars have made contact, which has unsettled Collins' car and sent him into the wall. I actually think that uh, Collins might, uh, sorry, Hotter might have had damage and not even noticed that, uh, although the, the wheels sort of gone away, has gone up to speed. But that's very unfortunate there for Andrew Collins, and that'll uh, ruin that amazing run of great finishes where he's moved up through the field. At the moment, the biggest posty, the biggest mover in the field. Oh, no. No way. Trent Harrison, the biggest mover in the field. How's that happened? Up 31 positions. That's been a storming drive from him from 40th on the grid up to 9th position. Right now, though, we are focusing on the battle for the lead because Matt Morris is in attack mode. Right on the tail of me off. Yep. Oh, now, with what will be three laps to go when she crosses the line... We'll have to defend very, very hard. They've got a huge margin back to the next car. That beat Blake Purdy seven and a half seconds back down the road. So uh, these two basically are going to fight for the win as long as they don't make contact. But when you're racing this hard and for a win, it's easier said than done to not make contact. Now, there is a bit of history on the line here for me, Ob, because if she can hold that Morris out for the final four minutes of this race, she will become the first female race winner in Just Send It. Actually, a very good lap that last time by from Ott as well. Ott's been really consistent. Morris's lap times are very, very up and down is one thing I've noticed. So, um, Morris needs to probably try and get that back into, uh, get the composure back there. Can drop down to behind, or more than a second back. You can see the gap extended out, but Morris looks really good through the oval section. The infield is more for Mia Ott's uh, advantage. So that battle won't change position for this lap, but uh, a battle that is going on is between Trent Harrison, Nick Carroll, Justin Rougier, Ross Rizzo. Oh, geez, this, this is a little bit more going on than I thought it was going to be. That's the Rougier in the red car, the number five up the inside. Rougier through on Trent Harrison. Ross Rizzo in there as well. These uh, guys are going to continue on, and that other car in there is Gary Hamilton who started in the second row fortunately uh, got turned around and uh, lap one turn one and trying to get a little bit of redemption and get his way back through the field so Justin Rougier another driver who got caught up in an incident in race number one and finished well down the order but has made very good progress in this race 100% done a very good job Matt Morris, Matt Morris has had issues in the wall. Morris is done. Has he done that all on his own? Or did he get some assistance? All by himself. Just a transition from the uh, the infield or below the yellow line coming up the circuit. Lost traction and around that car went. Same thing we saw happen to Blake Neck. 
So that's the risk, isn't it, of running below the yellow line. The surface change, the undulation change when you head back up onto the oval can unsettle the car, and that's what has happened to Matt Morris there. So that elevates Blake Purdy up into second position, but with 7.6 seconds deficit to Mia Ott. There's this battle between Harrison and Rizzo. Rizzo just uh, lacking pace just from that damage from those incidents we saw earlier on. You know, as we said earlier, how good Rizzo is. And have a look at just the head too. Nick Carroll has brought Justin Ruggier back into this fight. Nick Carroll was right up uh, way ahead not that long ago. But the last few laps, Nick Carroll's pace has dropped. Justin Ruggier is flying along. So that's shaping up to be a good battle for what will be position six and seven. If they start fighting or invite the other three cars of Harrison, Rizzo and Feigl into the battle as well. I wouldn't be surprised to see them there. We're going to have one lap to go across the line with only under a minute to go. How quick is this race going? I mean, 20 minutes doesn't go... Well, it goes by pretty quick anyway, but... These races really do fly by with only 20 minutes in length. Rougie with a really good slipstream here from Nick Carroll. He'll pull to the outside. And we'll have the high line. Can he switch back to the inside or can he go all the way around the outside with superior momentum? Through the tri-oval section, those two cars head. Good move. And Rougie breaks later. He'll get the job done on the outside at turn one. Nice job, Justin Rougie. But, uh... Nick De Silva and Terry Nightingale also changing positions. Oh, a little bit of a bump there as Nightingale covered off that move. A little bit too aggressively there, potentially, but uh, move done. Nightingale up into 12th, De Silva back to 13th, but last lap. Hole to win, potentially, here for Mia Rott, starting from the front row after finishing 23rd in race one. Gets the lucky draw of the spinny wheel. And uh, now leads this race by a very, very good margin. And this has been a good performance from Terry Nightingale as well, because remember, he got... or well, found himself in the transfer spot in the B race and got yep. moved up into the main race with race number two, and he's come up to be just outside the top ten. So uh, another little bit of a timing glitch here with the guys uh, deciding to do donuts and rip up the front straight <laughs> of... Uh, What's that all about? Oh, who'd know? <laughs> who'd know in this race, but yeah. Mia Rott's going to come across the line. You get fines for that, don't you? Not oh, in just centred, obviously. Maybe but congratulations, Mia Ott makes history in race two for season two of just send it here at Daytona. She becomes the first female competitor to score a race win in the just send it series. I had to zoom in on your face there. We're going to get three wide across the line, though. Oh, good close finish oh. there between. Justin Ruggia, Nick Carroll, and Trent Harrison. Have a look at the gap between Ruggia and Carroll. We said it was close last race with six, uh, six thousandths of a second. That one was four thousandths of a second. Yeah, unbelievably tight there. Carroll getting home in ninth, just ahead of Ruggia. Here it is. Oh, there was contact after the finish line as well. Have a look how close this is between all these three. Harrison on the inside. It was actually on the grass there at one point. But have a look at the actual finish line. And I reckon your nose has just got that across the line there. <laughs> look, there's oh, no, literally. literally nothing in it. Then you can say Nick Carroll literally won by a nose there. <laughs> what a race, though. How fun was that? That was good. I'm loving the reverse grid format. Congratulations to Mia Rod on a, another great victory. A great victory, I should say. Another new winner to the list here on Just Send It. Don't forget to share the broadcast too and uh, like the page on Facebook and Instagram and uh, you can win yourself some prizes throughout the season. But we'll go through the race results. So, me, I want your race winner by 7.6 seconds in the end from Blake Purdy. And as I mentioned, she becomes the first female race winner in a Just Send It race. Wayne Burke, what a night he's had. First in race number one, had to start in 23rd position 
with the reverse grid format for race two, but carved his way up through to position three. <clears throat> Brad Newman getting home in position four, ahead of Job Stewart. Trent Harrison in sixth, ahead of Nick Carroll, and Justin Rougier completing the top eight. We got Simon Feigl in ninth position, finished second in race one, but uh, he will have a few words with his teammate, that being Josh Anderson, uh, after that race. Andre Burrell in tenth position, good drive there from Andre. In uh, 11th position, Terry Nightingale, as you said, from the second race, makes his way up into 11th in race one. So well done from Terry. Nick De Silva in 12th position. Christian Limbaum in 13th position with Ryan Jerick, Josh Rogers, and Ross Rizzo rounding out the top 16. So overall thoughts on the reverse grid format. We'll just run through the rest of the results first. But Jack Hotter in 17th. Andrew Collins had a few incidents, managed to get home in 18th spot. Ahead of Race Lowe, who started on the front row that fell back to 19th. Back to Gary Hamilton, Brenton Hobson, Paul Mansell in 22nd position, Jonathan Bykoff in 23rd, and Vince Gucciardo in 24th position. Then we got Ben McClelland in 25th, two laps down. Then the DNFs from this point on, 26th through to 41st. 16 cars did not finish the race. Matt Morris, Van, uh, Van Thiago probably butchered that name, but I always butcher people's names, so my apologies. Michael Hammond, Jared Philsell, Blake Neck, Cooper Webster, Michael Cutt, Gerald C I'll run through the rest here with uh, Joshua Anderson, Tyler Howard, Brett Cananzi, Simon Black, Jackson Susan Harlow, Emerson Harvey, Glenn Wood, Jackson Walls, and also Jeremy Clark, Dan Effing. Wayne Burke, interestingly, got the fastest lap of the race on the last lap or second last lap of the race there. So once he had some clear track, he was able to put his head down and obviously exploit the performance of his car. We know that he was quick tonight because he got the win in race number one, but really, really good drive through the field for a pair of top three finishes this evening. So like I was about to ask there, Jay, overall thoughts on the reverse grid format? I thought it worked well, and I can't wait to see what happens when we expand it to some bigger fields throughout the rest of the series when we have 60 cars on the grid. Yeah, it should be good. And to see the guys transfer through as well from the other races on the same night, I think that's a pretty cool thing as well. So it gives a bit of incentive for those drivers back in the field to try and work their way forward and, and make their way up through the field. So looking forward to seeing how that all plays out as well. But what a night of racing. I mean, it's got a little bit longer than we were expecting, but I don't mind in the slightest. It's been such good fun. Looking forward to plenty more weeks of just sending it for season two. Don't forget as well the competition, the winner for the home viewer competition for week one of Just Send It will be announced via the Just Send It Facebook page tomorrow, so stay tuned for that one. Yep, and plenty more action with us at Simspeed TV as well tomorrow. Uh, sorry, Thursday night we will have the uh, Michelin Pilot Challenge, the final round of the TCR race. We head to Phillip Island for that. We've got uh, Sunday V8 Scops, Monday uh, iRacing V8 Series, next Tuesday, as we said, at uh, 8.15 Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. We will have just sent it back again. But as you said, uh, make sure you do uh, get yourself organised for the uh, prize. It's a pretty cool prize, so make sure you do uh, get yourself out there. And looking forward to seeing who wins it tomorrow. And hopefully we'll see lots of photos from whoever gets that prize as well. Plenty of other prizes on the line for our Just Send It competitors throughout season number two. Looking forward to having some of our high-profile drivers back on the grid for upcoming weeks of the series as well. We'll have, no doubt, some of our Supercars Championship competitors back on the grid. Possibility we might even have a couple of international superstars making some appearances as well. Just Send It is the series where it's all about having fun. It's all about licking the stamp and sending it it's all about everyday people having the opportunity to race against superstars and sport. This is fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he can't win the outside. Oh, both of them. Maloney. Oh, he's, oh, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up the oh, wall. Oh, my God. Oh, big crash. Oh, my goodness. Half the field's going to get rolled. Second very close. These guys.
realize I want to want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go! Oh, oh no! That's massive! This is it! This is over! I can't believe this! Oh my oh, god! God, what?